sickness, getting back to hat care, this is very important. Keep your hat off the brim. Keep it upside down like this, or keep it hung up, or in the box. All three positions, the brim is floating in the air. The second part of the equation is that the hat, if it has a snap brim, should not be down. You might be saying, well, I'm not one of those hipsters who wears his hats up. It doesn't matter. If you want your hat to go down and stay down, you have to maintain this pivot point here, this curve. See how it scoops? You don't want the hat resting on its brim, and worst of all, resting on its brim with it snapped. You're gonna get some kind of weird shape going on. You're gonna lose the rigidity. It's gonna become soft, mushy, and flat, and your brim will be out of shape. Eventually, it won't even stay down because you did that. So leave the brim up and off the surface of the table. Hang it up on your uh, coat rack, which is the right thing to do. Uh, whether you're young or old, you know, you take your hat, you hang it up on a coat rack. That's what you do. You don't have one, you stick it on a doorknob or something, or a banister, whatever, your guitar or something, something like this. You know? uh, don't put it on the floor, don't put it on the shelf. If you have a shelf in the closet, put it upside down on the shelf. If you have five hats, you can put them in little stacks, but if you're gonna stack them, don't stack them tight and put something between them, like some saran wrap or some uh, foam or something. It's a good idea not to stack them. If you have to, do it really loosely because what happens is the hat below the ribbon suffers. You see those wrinkles? That comes from the top hat pushing it up down. There it is again, cabin breaking his own rules. I have a set of hat, hats at home that I break all the rules because I, I like them to get beat up. It's just a thing. I have many hats, 30, 40, whatever. And some of them I like to uh, keep a little soft and beat up. Look at the wrinkle on that. That's from stacking it. The top one squashes it. So just don't stack them. If you have to, do it super loosely and upside down and stack the ones that have leather bands underneath or the ones that have thin bands underneath. The ones that have the big ribbons, make them the top big daddy hat you know? because those are the ones that get damaged. And if you could do better, put a piece of saran wrap over that whole thing so that uh, like little spacers in between your hats. Look at this, I got moth holes in this. Is that a moth hole? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Wow, I've never had moth holes in it. I didn't think I did have moths. Well, there you go. All right, here's the thing for uh, moths. I used to take um, peppermint oil and uh, lavender oil, but the good stuff, not the cheap stuff that you buy in the street from the dude, you know? You gotta buy the real stuff. Uh, they call it food grade or the something something grade oil. There's one that's below food grade that's still good enough. Um, and it's the real deal oil that's not like, you know, fake. You gotta get this stuff, you mix them together in a spray bottle. You put a spray bottle filled up with water and you dump as much lavender and as much peppermint as you can afford in that bottle. Or use half of it and save it for another bottle. And then you just fill it up with water and put a tiny bit of alcohol in there as a preservative, a little bit of uh, what do you call it, I, rubbing alcohol, isopropyl? You stick it in there, isopropyl, whatever. Uh, you throw it in there like a capful, just as a preservative, even less, half a capful. And you shake it up, shake it up. The mixture is amazing, it's divine. You, what you do is you use it as a cleaner. Um, you spray it inside your closet where you have like all of your um, hats and uh, such. I used to use it to clean dust with. It worked really well. Just clean, clean, clean. Have the, even keep that rag, the cleaning rag around because it smells great, like the lavender and everything. And people will walk in and be like, wow, that's an amazing smell. It's amazing because it's natural. It smells pleasant. So the peppermint and the lavender kind of cancel each other out and it becomes a sort of like, not too hippy dippy smell, just kind of like a good smell. And um, for some reason, I think if it's strong enough, the insects don't like it and they go away. Uh, you can't mess around. Cedar chips and cedar blocks don't work. 
if you have an entire cedar closet that works um, it has to really stink like cedar or eucalyptus or one of these really strong things um, you'll get rid of the moths all right let's get back to the hats and stuff now basically oh we've got plenty of time plenty of time to talk okay basically with the hats the first step of the equation is keep it off the brim second step is keep the brim up okay whether you wear your hat down or up keep it up all right and the last thing you could do is you can let me get a better hat as an example uh, all right it's actually got a flange on it all right the last thing you do while, while the hat is up you you put your hands along here and just make sure everything looks even to you. You can even use a straight edge like a tabletop or something, spin it around. It's going to dry the way you leave it. So if you see a kink in it, uh, straighten the kink out, you know, gently. The other thing is the crown. The crown will dry the way you leave it too. So if you've got a grip shape, it's going to permanently dry the next day when you have a wet hat it will dry in and lock in and that will be your new permanent shape so open it up when you're putting your wet hat to bed open it up feel where the center crease is blocked push it gently it'll snap back and then the two creases uh, two pinches on the side feel for them and they'll fall into place get your original shape stock shape from the factory that whoever, Stetson, Dobbs, Borsalino, Bailey, whoever put the shape in, you want that shape back, or whatever shape you intend to have in the hat, get it back before the hat dries. Otherwise, you're gonna have a new shape on your hands. Now, this is also a time to take advantage of this. Let's say your hat has always bugged the hell out of you. Here's a great trick. Let's say your hat is too high, and you're like, man, this hat is too high. I'm a short guy, I need a lower crown. Here's your time to lower it because it's gonna dry any way you leave it. So if you wanna hat to look lower, you just lower the front. The perceived height is all in here. So don't worry about lowering the entire hat, just this chunk right in the front. So I'm gonna lower it now. Okay. I'm gonna lower it a lot just to kind of exaggerate it. Okay, lower it down. Okay, so now we've got a really low crown. It was like way up there before. I'll show you the old crown. Well, not that low, but yeah. Brought it down to that other space. And it's gonna dry like that now. If I want a tighter pinch, tighten the pinch up. Next day it will dry exactly like that and then lock into it like you just steamed it. So yeah, it's a dangerous thing that if you have your hat a weird way, like a grip or something, it'll dry funny, but it's also a time of taking advantage of that if you want to make any changes. Get it back to the original shape, straighten your brim, make sure you got the curve, everything in the up position, keep the brim off the table, so either hang it up, invert it like this, or put it in the box like this, you know? and uh, lastly, keep it away from heat heat is bad heat is shrinks this um, leather inside the leather sweatband will definitely shrink and if you don't wear your hat this year next year next year next year and just don't wear it for like four or five years definitely all the heat every winter in your house is going to shrink that leather and dry it out deprive it of water it gets dehydrated basically the hat feels a half size tighter a whole size tighter a fraction of a size tighter but it feels tight so you might have to bring your hat in for a stretch it actually stretching over the knee is good for caps and stretching what I do is the, the very back the spine of the hat where the um, you know what I'm talking about like a flat cap or something if I want to stretch them I use my knee but I just take the back seam right back there behind your head and I steam that and soften it then I pull it over my knee Increasing pressure, increasing pressure. I've done it to half, gently, but very hard. Until I feel something move and I'm like, okay, anymore, I'm gonna break something. So, uh, like the tiniest bit of like something, not breaking, but kind of moving or snapping or something, I ease off. So, <laughs> it's always worked for me. I've never broken a hat uh, yet. And uh, what else? People who have a wind cord on their hat, they're confused. 
and they're all knotted up. It's not that hard. It's a slip knot. It's basically a, a lock's head knot. So uh, there's a loop here. And the loop has formed a bigger loop, like a lasso or a noose effect. You take that, make that ring bigger, 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 open it up, put it around the whole crown, tuck it down underneath the band in that little space. If it's too tight, move it one way, slide it one way for more slack, pull it the other way to make it tighter, and just leave it there. The button should reside somewhere near the bow and feel nice and tight. Sometimes a little looser stays intact. You just don't want it riding up. Um, they do ride upwards a lot. It's just something they do. So you'll get the hang of it. You'll get it to stay. Yeah, now it's staying. So uh, that's your wind cord. What else? Keeping it away from heat, very important. Um, if you have a hat that's super wet, I would say don't worry so much about the hat getting killed the next day, but definitely worry about it drying too quickly. It's like throwing it in the dryer, basically. So if your house is nice and warm, it's a toasty February afternoon, you got a fire going and it's nice and warm in there and outside is freezing, most likely your house is super dry. The radiators are just pumping or something. It's dry, you know, you get dry skin, dry throat, everything. The hat gets dry too. Beep, beep, beep. Ah, man, I wish I had the guitar plugged in. Anyway, so you gotta let these things dry uh, slowly at room temperature or even a little cool is, uh, is good. So flip it, okay, hang it up or invert it. Open the window a little bit, put it in the bathroom, put it in the kitchen, somewhere where you could shut the door and open the window. So maybe it's February and opening the window is crazy right now because the whole house will get freezing. To do it in a little way, just open a little tiny bit, you know, like an inch, and then close the bathroom door. And let this sucker dry in an environment that isn't freezing, but just isn't really hot. You know, open it a half an inch or whatever it takes but it's gotta breathe. If the house is really warm, it's winter out, most likely you're doing down to that leather and the hat's getting, you know, let it dry at room temperature, that's what right. That's uh, part two of taking care of your hats. Uh, I should call it quits now because my son will be home pretty soon. And uh, I have to meet his bus. Can't be late for the little guy's bus. This is Kevin from that old Jay. Jay, that's a day.